Now, Russia has stepped up its uh, airstrikes on Islamic State over the last few days, and it's now targeting the transport of the oil, which brings in much of ISIL's funding. We can get more on this now from RT's Lizzie Phelan, uh, who's in Damascus. She joins us now. Uh, Lizzie, can you tell us more then about the tactics being used by Russia at the moment in its air campaign in Syria? Right, well, uh, the Russian general staff has said that over the last 24 hours, they've struck 500 oil trucks transporting uh, oil from Syria to refineries in Iraq, and that this has considerably cut down the militants' capability for uh, illegally exporting oil and consequently getting revenues from the contraband, which is the single biggest source of funding for the Islamic State. Now, recently uh, at the G20 summit in Turkey, we heard the Russian President Vladimir Putin say that the Islamic State is receiving finance from individuals from 40 countries, including uh, G20 members, presumably from uh, trade, uh, trade in oil. And he also revealed satellite images which showed convoys of Islamic State uh, trucks transporting oil stretching dozens of kilometers, which Moscow has dubbed the Islamic State's pipeline on wheels. Now, shortly after those comments on Monday, the United States uh, struck a convoy of 116 Islamic uh, State trucks in Syria, which they appear to have been, sh they appear to have been shamed into doing by uh, President Putin's comments, because indeed it's the first time that they've targeted uh, a, an Islamic State convoy of trucks transporting oil since they began their airstrikes against the group more than one year ago. OK, thanks, uh, Lizzie. That was uh, Artie's Lizzie feeling there, live from Damascus. Well, Moscow is currently hosting an international energy forum, and economist Konstantin Gorgiev is there at the moment. We can uh, talk to him, too, about this topic. Um, thanks very much for coming on to the programme this afternoon, Konstantin. Uh, firstly, we were hearing there how Russia is attacking Islamic State oil infrastructure. Just put this into context for us. How important is oil in the overall funding of ISIS? Delighted to be with you here and speaking from the conference by the Teletrade about this matter, and we'll be talking about it here again. Um, ISIS is not as important in terms of the supply of oil, the quantum of oil that is being supplied, the quality of oil being supplied, and the markets to which it is being supplied are all characterized with very high cost and with, high, with fairly low quality. The quantity itself is very small. What really makes a difference right now is the global imbalance between the supply and demand. It's that simple. The expectation of supply and expectation of demand is making significant significant pressure, putting significant pressure on oil prices in terms of the futures markets. And this is primarily driven by the anticipation that Iranian oil is going to start flowing freely globally in the next few months. And as a result of that, there will be much bigger supply of oil coming into the market than anything ISIS hopes to pro produce. In spot prices, there is certainly an issue of demand. There is a depressed demand based on the expectations that economic growth globally is going to stay at around 3 3.5 percent next year. And if that picks up, as I would expect, then the oil prices are going to firm up. On the supply side, on the spot side, we have huge number of tankers circling the Gulf of Mexico right now, full of oil, effectively nowhere to put that oil on the ground and nobody to buy it. So as a result of that, ISIS is fairly minor. It can do some damage in local markets, but it's not making significant global impact in my view. And in terms of actually funding how ISIS operates too, what other sources of funding do ISIS rely on and how difficult is it to cut them off from that too? Well, not being a specialist on geopolitical side of ISIS, I would say that as any organization of that sort, it is run on a very shoestring budget. It's a low-cost operation, which is funded primarily, again, by a combination of oil revenues and by the seizure of assets. Remember, they have seized a lot of private assets in the areas of um, Iraq and in the areas of Syria that they occupied. They also benefit from the illegal flow of funds. And if I were G20 right now, I would raise an issue of black finance even more than just an issue of solely oil sales themselves, because I do suspect that ISIS is funded internationally through the flow of legal, illegal money. OK. And, Constantine, just returning to the general issue of oil then, um, you said you expect prices to firm up, but many people, are you somebody who's surprised that prices have remained low for so long, given that we're hearing uh, many of the sort of marginal producers or many people in the, the shale and fracking industry have gone out of business already, and yet prices remain still low? 
No, I'm not surprised. In fact, I will anticipate that the prices will go down a little bit in the, into the beginning of the year, primarily simply as we move towards the winter. Shutting down the even unprofitable wells becomes difficult in the likes of North Dakota, North Slope, Alaska and Canada, simply because of the weather conditions and the temperature conditions. It's the same issue with Siberia, for example, in Russia as well. Now, as we move out of the winter, I would expect that the global growth is going to pick up, demand is going to pick up, and some rationalization in oil production in the shale area and in the sands in Canadian sense is going to take some of the surplus production out of the market as well. I do expect that the next year we'll see the prices going towards 60, uh, $60 a barrel somewhere there with a reasonable probability, but towards the second half of the year rather than the beginning. Before then we might see even deep towards 40 and below. Okay, Constantine, we'll leave it there. We'll let you get back to the Energy Forum. Thanks very much for your time this afternoon. That was uh, economist Konstantin Gorgiev uh, live there from the centre of Moscow. He's uh, a professor of finance at Trinity College in Dublin. Thank you.